Hello everyone, this video is going to talk about an inexpensive and easy way to build a lens mount uh, to use in a lab. Now this, this lens mount is not the optical precision lens mounts that you'll get uh, if you order one from a optics company, but they're also uh, it's significantly cheaper. And if you don't have an optics uh, table, or then your, your loss in precision is not such a big deal. So here we have an example of what uh, of the of the design we're going to we're going to build today. It's basically two steel plates with a hole cut in the middle and mounted in a little bracket. So uh, it's not particularly complicated, but I know that the lab is going to have to build at least one more, and I'm not going to do it. So I figured I'd make a little video uh, to show whoever has to do it how I built the ones that we're using now. So we have. Uh, the lenses that we're dealing with right now are 100 millimeter diameter, 200 millimeter focal length by uh, convex lenses. So we start with uh, a standard steel plate. This is, I think it's 26 gauge steel. It's quite thin, easily cuttable with 10 snips. We're gonna make, uh, we're gonna draw out our six inch. We make six six inch squares. So I just drew in the numbers so you can see them on the video. We're going to take, cut out our six inch square, just use ten snips, cut it nice, it, it cuts quite easily. Uh, make sure you wear gloves because the metal will cut you if, if you don't wear gloves. And then mark the center point in, of the square itself. And then we're going to draw uh, a 80 centimeter diameter circle around the center. So I left a s 10 millimeters on the radius to uh, let the steel grip the lens. So if you actually needed to use the whole 100 millimeter diameter of the lens, then uh, you need to adjust this or buy one of the fancy mounts or, or whatever you need to do. So this is going to give you an 80 millimeter window. So to do this, I, I use calipers to measure out 40 millimeters and then uh, set a uh, set of, oh, what is this thing called? I've forgotten. Um, use this thing you use to draw circles, which is what that is. Set it to the width of 40 millimeters, put it in the center, and draw my circle. And then I just highlighted the circle in, in, in black so that you can see it on the image, which made it not nearly as good of a circle as it was when I originally drew it. And then the diameter is there, marked as well. For you to see. So we take that, and we're going to center punch just like five holes right around the center so that we can drill those out. And then cut that out with uh, the 10 snips just cutting from hole to hole to hole to make a, a larger hole. You can also just drill a larger hole, but then you have to have access to a large drill bit, um, which are a pain to come by. And then we're going to cut, we're going to begin to cut the circle. So we're not going to cut out to the circle edge and then try and cut the circle uh, at a 90 degree angle. We're going to start at the center and kind of spiral our way out to the to the to the edge of the circle, and we end up cutting it fairly well. You can get a pretty fairly consistent cut with with a, a pair of tin snips. With a little practice, you get a little better. These are right-handed tin snips or right-turning tin snips. In other words, they turn well. Well, they're right-handed tin snips that turn well to the left, so they they turn good to the left. There's also tin snips that cut straight and tin snips that cut to the right. So depending on which kind of tin snips you're using, uh, you want to pay attention to which direction you want to cut. But the ones we have in the lab are these red-handled ones that cut to the left. So you want to do this process twice. So we're going to make two plates, same size, hole in the center, 80 millimeter diameter hole in the center. Then we're going to mark uh, the corners and drill a hole uh, in the corner. These are half inch away from the from the edge. I know I switch my measurement units back and forth, but some things are easier to do in inches for me. Some things are easier in millimeters. So then uh, we're going to line up once we once we drill the the mounting holes for the first plate. We're going to line up the two center holes, uh, the two large 80 millimeter center holes. Line them up together and then mark. The, uh, the mounting holes in the corners through the holes we already drilled on the first plate. And the reason we do this is because since we've cut it by hand, they're not necessarily lined up directly. Um, it's not precisely machined. So we want to we wanna build it um, part by part by part and fit it together when we make it. So we're going to mark the holes on the second plate so that the center is aligned uh, 
the two holes in the center are, are aligned together. And then we want to mark the orientation of the plates together. So I like to put one, two, uh, three, four, or some A, B, C, D, or however I'm going to mark up which side, or however I'm going to know which side is which. Uh, after I drill the holes in the second plate, and it all lines up fine, um, I'm going to cut, uh, this is a three inch little aluminum, angle aluminum piece, and I drill two holes there, three quarters of an inch from the edge in the center of one side. So then I have my my plate, I'm going to line it up in the center, and then I'm going to mark two holes in the plate uh, so that I can fit it in the bracket. And I've just set the plate at the edge of the desk so that um, the holes line up with how it's going to sit in when it's all put together. So once we drill the holes in the first plate, we're going to do the same procedure. We're going to line up both plates. I uh, actually put in the screws to make sure it all fits together, and then mark the holes for the mounting bracket on the second plate. So we'll call this little 3-inch aluminum angle iron the mounting bracket, if you like. So after we drill those holes, we're going to drill one big hole in, well, I'm drilling a, a quarter-inch hole in the other side of the mounting bracket so that it can fit on a, uh, a test stand or a, a ring stand if you will, even though it doesn't have a ring on it. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to I'm going to file down the edges and try to reduce any any burrs or any any sharpness and uh, round the corners with some ten snips so they don't catch on people's they don't scrape people or cut them up too much. And then uh, so that we don't scratch up the lens because all we have here is rough cut steel plate. I'm going to wrap it in and I'm using electrical tape, but any kind of gasket material would probably work work just as well. But we have uh, we have electrical tape in the lab so that's what I was using, just cutting little uh, little strips of it and then wrapping it around the edges of both both plates. And now that I have that done, I have my my uh, my lens, I'm just gonna set the lens in the hole and trying to give one centimeter uh, around the edge equally so that the lens is actually mounted in the center of the mount, so it's sitting in the center of the mount. Then I put in the screws uh, and and bolt it together, put the screws in, put the nuts in, and uh, so you want to put in all your screws before you tighten down the nuts because since it's a, a such a thin steel, such thin steel, it'll actually bend and it'll be much harder to put in uh, the rest of the, the bolts, not screws, the bolts, right, no taper. Uh, if you tighten down the first one before you put in the last one, it'll be hard to get in the last one. And then, uh, now that it's made, we can mount it anywhere we want. So this is uh, one of the setups uh, just C-clamped on an aluminum bracket outside of a combustion chamber. You can also mount it on a ring stand like I showed at the beginning. Or you can actually use a large steel plate as one of the surfaces and uh, the six inch square on the back so that it's this lens is mounted directly in the side of the combustion chamber as part of a shadow graph. So and this is the picture I showed at the beginning. So I, I can't guarantee that this this design will hold up to much uh, much damage or you can't throw it around. It might scratch your lens if your gasket material isn't thick enough. Uh, I give no guarantees it'll work and assume no liability, but this is how I've built the ring or the lens mounts for the the lenses that we've been using in, in our lab. So I hope you found this useful and have a good day.